Hello once again, Simon Weston here. Today I want to talk about what an efficient golf swing is, how we can maximise our distance and become a better ball striker. A lot of my students who initially come for lessons complain of, of lack of distance, not hitting the ball far enough, and they usually equate that to meaning that their swing speed is too slow. Now, every golfer is going to be limited to how fast they can swing a golf club. Some of the best players in the world have, have a lot of club head speed, but club head speed alone is not going to create distance. There's five things you need to consider. I want to use this video today to discuss what those five things are. What I've used here, I've used my the data from my flyscope. This is a shot that I hit myself using a 7 iron. You can see here in the highlighted red circle that the carry distance was 166 yards. The overall distance is 167, so only one yard of roll. It's just pretty typical distance for myself. Um, club head speed, just under 90 miles an hour. Ball speed, here we've got the spin rate. We've got a lot of information on this fly scope. I want to discuss what these numbers here are. First thing I want to talk about is this highlighted area here where it says smash or another way of describing that is the efficiency of the golf swing so this number 1.32 so what does that mean well it's simply it's a mathematical equation of the ball speed divided by the club head speed so how fast is the ball going compared to how fast the club is going and that gives me a number here of 1.32 which which for reference is, is a good number considering I'm using a 7 iron so this is quite an efficient golf swing I got the most distance out of the speed I was able to generate if for example that number was 1.2 well we're going to see a loss of distance even if the club head speed is maintained so if this club head speed was still 87.3 and the smash or the efficiency number was down to 1.2 the ball speed will be reduced down to somewhere around about 100 miles an hour. Therefore, of course, we're going to lose distance. So let's discuss what's the five things that go into creating an efficient golf swing. We know that club head speed, maximum club head speed, is what we desire to be able to hit the ball further. We can't ignore the fact that if you swing slow, you are going to hit the ball shorter distance generally but the five things to consider is the angle of the club face at impact is the club face square or is the club face open or closed at impact ideally what we're looking for of course is to have a square club face if the if the face of the club is open we're going to be adding loft to the club we're going to increase our backspin and these two things alone are going to reduce the distance that the ball travels if you take a look here at the, the numbers I produced, on the top left, we see the club face angle impact is only 1.3 degrees to the right. So a 0.0, .0 would mean the face is perfectly square. At 1.3 degrees, this is pretty close, to, pretty close to what we want. I would think a, a margin of error with a 7 iron would be plus or minus 2 degrees is going to be no real problem. If, for example, this number was 5 or, or 6 degrees to the right, then we're going to encounter a loss of distance and also a loss of direction. An open club face or one aiming to the right is going to add loft. So the 8 iron essentially plays like, sorry, the 7 iron will play like an 8 iron, as well as the ball going to the right, and the spin will increase. So club face angle is the first consideration. The second thing to consider is the path of the golf swing. So this over here in the orange number. So the path of my swing was 3.5 degrees to the right. Now in a previous video we've discussed how we draw the ball and that's the shot that I normally play with. So these numbers here with a 1.3 degree right club face and a 3.5 degree right path is going to produce a draw which is a shot that I hit in this particular example. But again, the 3.5 is still a relatively low number. It's a higher number than the 
But again, nothing that's going to be too inefficient in losing distance on our golf ball. If this was a higher number, say 7 or 8, we're going to create more side spin, we're going to create less efficiency, and we're going to lose distance. Third thing for which to consider in determining how far the ball goes and the quality <laughs> of the impact is what we would call the angle of descent. So how steeply or how shallow does the club approach the ball? Now, depending on what club we're using, here, for example, I had the 7-iron. We should have the club moving down anywhere between 4 to 5 degrees as it strikes the ball. As we can see right here, again, this data taken from the flight scope. The downward angle, minus 1.4 degrees, is just about perfect. If this was a higher number, if the club was coming down to say minus 6 or minus 7, it's going to become a little bit inefficient. The club's going to come down to the ground too steeply, perhaps creating a miss hit. What I typically see more often than not with inefficient golf swings is this, uh, this number is too low, or I should say too high. So this is a minus number. So if this was a minus 1 or a 0, or even in some cases a plus, plus 1 or plus 2, this, is, this will be too shallow into the golf ball in creating a low club face impact most likely generating a miss hit. So, so far we've got club face alignment, we've got swing path direction, we've got angle of descent, how steeply does the club move down through impact. And if those three things are done correctly, what you will have, you'll have a nice solid impact in the middle of your club face. Now one way you can check for that is to put some impact tape on your club and you'll be able to see exactly where the golf ball strikes the club face as we can see here with this example. Again, same 7-iron, we see the impact position virtually right in the middle of the club face which is what we're looking for. Key thing to note is that the center of that impact would be right here. Now a lot of times people hit the center of their golf ball unfortunately hits too low on their club face even towards the bottom of the club and that of course is a very inefficient impact. I want you to understand that the the center impact as we see here is a result of the first three things being close to correct. We, if you have the club face open or closed not so easy to get a center contact. If the swing path is off either too much to the right, too much to the left Particularly, it's going to be more than likely not in the centre. The angle of descent as the club's moving down, too steep, too shallow, can also change this. So a well-struck centred hit, as we see here, is a result of the first three impact conditions being very good. <laughs> Face, path and angle. If your impact is not in the centre and you're towards the toe or the heel or the bottom of the club, one of or a combination of the three things is, is incorrect. So you need to look at your golf swing and figure out what's causing that miss hit. And then the final fifth impact condition that determines how far the ball can go is of course now the club head speed. So if you've got good face, good path and good angle and you've got a center impact and then you increase the club head speed, you will definitely increase the distance the ball travels. If you just increase the speed and you lose the face control, your swing path is poor, your angle of attack is incorrect, your impact centeredness will not be correct, you're going to lose distance. So just simply swinging faster is not the way to hit the ball further. There's many more things to consider. Now, as an, as a, as an example of an inefficient golf swing, one that we're probably looking to avoid, but just so we can compare it to what a, a good golf swing is. Directly after this shot that I hit with the good impact conditions, I then went ahead and intentionally made a poor swing, hit the ball off the center of the club face, opened the club face, basically just hit a poor shot. And I'd like to look at the information that came up from the, the shot that I did here. And first thing I want you to notice is the club head speed has really remained virtually unchanged. 
it's a couple of miles an hour slower. I try to maintain it to be the same. Taking a look at the ball speed, this has dropped down quite a lot. This is now under 100 miles an hour. Now, previously that was 115 miles an hour, so that's dropped. Of course, that's had a, an advert effect on the smash or the impact efficiency of this golf swing. It's down all the way down to 1.13, so this ball is not travelling very quickly compared to how fast the club head was travelling. As a result, we can see a, a significant loss of distance, some 30 yards of distance being lost. So in this example, essentially the club head was swinging at the same speed, but the swing path was poor, as we can see down here. The face angle was not very good. The club face was aiming open to the swing path. The angle of attack was, was poor. The centeredness of hit was certainly not in the center. And the end result of all of that is the ball didn't go very far. 30 yards of distance was lost. So to prove my point there, you can, you can maintain your club head speed and you can lose distance if your other impact conditions, all four of them, are not very good. Oppositely, you can increase your distance if you maintain your club head speed and improve your other factors. Most people don't understand that. They think, okay, to get more distance, I've simply got to swing faster, and it's just not true. If we look in more detail here of this poor shot that I hit previously, the face was too far to the left. Swing path was really to the left. So this gives us a, a significantly open club face relative to the path. The downward angle of attack was still quite good. The um, impact, as I mentioned earlier, was not in the center. The speed was essentially maintained and the distance was greatly lost. So consider all of these things in determining why the ball goes where it does and, and why the ball goes as far as it does. There's one other thing I want you to consider before we finish this little video is this number here in the corner, the, the dynamic loft which says 39.5. Now, the 7 r that I was using has an actual loft of 35 degrees. That's what's built onto the golf club. When I made this golf swing and I struck the golf ball, the effective loft or the dynamic loft was increased to 39.5 degrees. So what that does is it makes our ball launch quite high. See here this number the launch angle of 25.3. So if we have a more lofted club and we launch the ball higher, of course the ball is going to go a shorter distance. So this particular shot here, which was quite a poor shot, was a, sh a club where we had 35 degrees of loft, which was my 7-iron. But as I struck this golf ball, I increased the loft to make it 39.5. So that loft getting up closer to the loft of what a 9-iron is. So essentially I've made my 7-iron almost into a 9-iron. Of course a 9-iron is not going to go as far as a 7-iron, so that's another thing to consider. The dynamic loft of what strikes onto the golf ball. When you look at what a good player does, the, the data that's going to come from a good player's strike would be one where the club is moving down at impact, as we discussed earlier, but also where we create a dynamic loft which is lower than the actual loft. As you can see here, this was the shot that went 167 yards. The 35 degrees of loft on the club has been decreased down to 25.5. So that loft is nearer to the loft of a, a 4 or a 5 iron. So this is another reason why the, the best players, the tour players, hit the ball significantly further than most amateurs because they de-loft, hang on, they de-loft the club come into impact. Okay, thank you. 